Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at Young's double slit experiment, a history of light, laser safety and we're going to finish with a summary. So we're going to start off by looking at Young's double slit experiment which actually demonstrates the fact that two coherent sources of light can interfere with each other. Interference is a property unique to waves. Observing an interference pattern means that two waves have superposed. So for example, we've come across previously that two dippers vibrating at the same frequency can produce two coherent water waves, which then result in a stable interference pattern produced by the two water waves when they superpose. The interference of light can be demonstrated using a filament lamp colour filter and successive plates with one and two narrow slits. So this is the setup that we can use to demonstrate the fact that light can interfere. So this is our filament lamp and we can see that the filament lamp produces white light which means it produces lots of different colours of light together and each colour has its own frequency. So we've seen that in order to demonstrate interference and to get a stable interference pattern, we need to have coherent light sources, which means that they must have the same frequency. So in order to get light of a single frequency, we're going to use a color filter. So what the color filter does is it filters out light of certain colors and it leaves us with only one frequency or color of light. So in this case, we've got this orange light. So this orange light then goes through a single slit. So in this case, we produce monochromatic light using a color filter and a filament lamp. So we said the filter filters out all the different colors and leaves us with only one. But another way to produce monochromatic light is to just use a laser because a laser only produces light of one color. So the light that we've filtered then goes through a single slit and then after that, it passes through two more slits that are narrow. This experiment is known as Young's double slit experiment. So Thomas Young was the person who first came up with this experiment to try and demonstrate the interference of light. And as we said, this is the setup of the double slit experiment. The colour filter ensures the light that passes through the single slit is monochromatic light of a single frequency. So we've said white light has a range of frequencies and that's because of all the different colours it's made up of. So each colour has a certain frequency. So for example, we have F1, F2, F3 and so on. So therefore, in order to get monochromatic light from a filament lamp which produces white light, we need to use a colour filter. So that's what we've done here and we end up with monochromatic light of a certain frequency. The initial single slit effectively creates a point source of light. This means there is a constant phase relationship across the beam. So we can see that as our monochromatic light passes through our first single slit, it becomes diffracted. So we've got here diffracted wave fronts of constant phase. So these diffracted wave fronts are of a constant phase because by diffracting the light through the single slit, we essentially create a point source, which is an emitter of circular waves. So that's why we've got curved wave fronts. They're circular wave fronts, but they've still got a constant phase between them. So now that we've created this point source, we then pass it through to more slits, which are narrow. The slit and the colour filter means that the light reaching the double slit is coherent, producing two sources of coherent waves. So we've said that in order to produce coherent waves, they need to have the same frequency. So by using the colour filter, we assume that our effective point source of light is producing light of a single frequency. So that means that when this light of a single frequency passes through the two narrow slits, we're able to create two coherent sources S1 and S2. So they're coherent because they have 
the same frequency and they also have a constant phase relationship. Those were the two conditions that we've come across in order to have coherent waves. Coherent waves could also be produced by directing a laser at the double slit. Lasers are a coherent source of light. So another coherent source we can use is a laser. And that's because laser light is of a single frequency and of a single colour. So laser light is automatically monochromatic. So therefore, again, if we pass a laser light through a slit, we can again create an effective point source of light of a single frequency. And if we then pass this through two narrow slits, which we can see here, we get two coherent wave sources. The light from each slit diffracts and overlaps, resulting in interference. So now we've established we've got two coherent sources, S1 and S2. And we've seen previously that when waves from two coherent sources overlap with each other, we get interference and we get a stable interference pattern. So in this section here, we can see that our light sources are overlapping. So we're going to get some kind of interference pattern, which is what we're going to look at now. The interference pattern of light can be observed on a screen as alternating dark and bright regions known as fringes. So we can place a screen after the two narrow slits to actually observe our interference pattern. So that's what we've got here. We've got a screen. And we can see that we've got bright fringes, like these ones here. And then we've also got some dark fringes. So we've got, in between all the bright fringes, we've got dark fringes. So this is what the interference pattern of two coherent light sources looks like. A bright fringe on the screen corresponds to constructive interference. So all of these bright fringes show us constructive interference. So this is when the two waves are in phase with each other and we produce a maximum amplitude. A dark fringe on the screen corresponds to destructive interference. So all these dark fringes in between our bright fringes show destructive interference. So destructive interference occurs when the two waves are in antiphase with each other and we get zero displacement. So since we've got zero displacement of the light waves, we have dark fringes because there's essentially no light in the dark fringes. That's why they appear dark. So we have light of zero amplitude, which is why we have dark areas. The interference fringes demonstrate that light acts like a wave. So we've previously said that light is an electromagnetic wave. So that's what we're showing here. And the fact that two coherent light sources actually interfere with each other and produce a pattern demonstrates the wave properties of light. So now that we've seen that Young's double slit experiment demonstrated the wave nature of light, we're going to look at a history of light and we're going to examine some of the theories that scientists had previously proposed about the nature of light. The first well-established theory of light was proposed by Sir Isaac Newton. He said that light was made up of a stream of particles. So this was Sir Isaac Newton's theory. And what he proposed was that light was made up of particles. So this was a particle theory. So for example, here, our beam of light is made up of a series of particles and he called these particles corpuscles. So that was the first well-established theory. Newton's particle theory of light could explain reflection and refraction. So for example, we can observe that when white light passes through a prism, it refracts, which is why we get all the different colours. So Newton proved that colour is a property of light passing through an object or reflecting from it rather than the object itself. So he was able to link the fact that white light produces this colour spectrum to light rather than the actual prism. So after 
Proving this, Newton coined the term colour spectrum and split it into seven regions. So that's what we've got here. We've got red, orange, yellow, green and so on. So these were the seven regions of the colour spectrum. And the fact that white light refracts and produces all these different colours was linked to Newton's idea that light was made up of particles. And that's down to the fact that he linked this property to the light itself rather than the object. Christian Huygens published a paper disagreeing with Newton. His theory said that light was a wave. So this is Christian Huygens and he proposed a contradictory theory. So he proposed the wave theory for light. So we've seen that a wave has a direction of propagation, so it propagates through space and it oscillates about an equilibrium position. So that's what this pink arrow shows us. It shows the direction of oscillation. So Huygens believed that light was made up of waves vibrating up and down perpendicular to the direction of which light travels. So that's so he proposed that the direction of oscillation of the light was perpendicular to the direction of propagation, which we can see here. Huygens' wave theory of light could also explain reflection and refraction. So for example, this diagram here shows light being reflected, and we've also drawn in the wavefronts of the light ray. So the fact that light could be reflected was explained by the wave theory. So reflection supported the fact that light could behave as a wave. Thomas Young showed that light experiences interference in his double slit experiment. Interference is a wave-like property, so light must act like a wave. So Thomas Young carried out the double slit experiment, which we've already come across. And Young's double slit experiment, which we've got the setup here again, actually demonstrated the wave-like nature of light because we have these two coherent sources, S1 and S2, and waves produced from these two sources interfere. So we get an interference pattern that we've already seen. And the fact that light produced from these two sources produces an interference pattern supported the idea that light behaves as a wave. So the fact that two light sources can interfere with each other provided evidence for the wave theory of light. So we've seen that in Young's double slit experiment we need to produce two coherent sources of light and in order to do this we need monochromatic light and one way of producing monochromatic light is to use a laser. So now we're going to look at laser safety because we do need to take certain precautions when using lasers. Young's double slit experiments can be performed using a laser because they are highly monochromatic. So here we have a picture of a laser and we've said previously that lasers produce light of one single frequency. So we've seen that white light is made up of lots of different colours of lights with different frequencies. So for example, F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. But we can see that this particular laser here only produces red light. So light of one colour. So since it's producing light of one colour, that means the light has one single frequency, which is F1. The frequency corresponding to red light. So we've already come across this idea and the fact that lasers produce light of a single frequency allows us to produce two coherent sources. A convex lens can focus monochromatic light into a very fine spot. So the monochromatic light that's produced by lasers can be focused into a very fine spot like this here. So we call this a focus. And this can be done by using a convex lens. And the reason it's possible to focus the monochromatic light into a very fine spot is because it's of a single frequency. Focusing the beam means that the intensity is concentrated to a very small area. So initially, before the light enters the lens, we can see that the intensity is spread across the beam. 
However, once the light passes through a lens, we can see that the intensity is concentrated at this spot here. So we can see that the intensity is concentrated because all of the light beams that initially entered the lens have met at this point. This is why it is an important safety precaution to never look along a laser beam, even after reflection. So whenever lasers are used in class, it's very important to not look at them directly, even if they've been reflected. So this can be very dangerous for your eyesight. And then another precaution you can take, along with not looking at them directly, is to use special safety glasses for lasers. So special safety glasses are also able to protect your eyes from laser light. The lens inside the eye would focus the beam onto the retina. This destroys the part of the retina at the focus. So we've said that when monochromatic light passes through a lens, it's focused at a point. We know that our eye contains a lens. So this means that when a high intensity beam enters our eye, so for example, a laser beam, the lens will be able to focus this beam to a certain point. So that's this point here. So it can focus the beam at this point because the beam is made up of monochromatic light of one single frequency. So this means we've got a very high intensity focus on our retina. And because of that, our retina can get damaged. And if our retina is damaged, that can affect our eyesight because the retina is where an image is focused and our brain then interprets that image. So this is why it's really important to take certain precautions when using lasers, such as wearing safety glasses or ensuring we don't look along the laser beam. So you're not meant to look at the laser directly. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together, let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.